The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session with me, Chamaze Anor Akebu, your history teacher. I will be taking you for history in the opposite arts class. As we proceed with our lesson, it's important for us to have a recapitulation of uh, the homework we had in the last class. And you were assigned uh, to verify the circumstances that led to the rise of André Marie Bida as Prime Minister in French Cameroon in 1957. In 1958, sorry. You were, what were the circumstances that led to the rise of André Marie Bida as Prime Minister in French Cameroon in 1957? Okay. The circumstances that led to the rise of André Marie Bida, we talk of the Brazzaville Conference. Yes, if you remember, André Marie Bida came to power in 1957 and then fell from power a few months later in 1958. The Brazzaville Conference, the rise of militant pressure groups in French Cameroon. Yes, militant pressure groups like the trade unions and uh, political parties. We talk of socio-economic and political effects of the Second World War, yes, Cameroon became uh, a trusteeship territory and so had to move on to becoming an independent country. Therefore, there were political changes which needed political leaders like André Marie Bida to pilot the affairs of French Cameroon towards independence. We talk of the birth of the UPC political party. Mm -hmm, that's another good response. The UPC political party, Union de Population du Cameroon, uh, was uh, the first indigenous political party, and because of some of his activities, he needed a powerful leader to be able to curb some of the activities like harassment and sabotage of the party. We talk of the Loire Cadre. In addition, we talk of the Loire Cadre of 1956, the framework law, which uh, requested, or in one of its provisions, requested for an indigenous. Cameroonian, French Cameroonian, who will become, or to become a prime minister in the territory. And for that reason, there was political competition among the political actors for who to become the prime minister of, or the premier of French Cameroon. We talk of the holding of uh, the 1956 elections into the Legislative Assembly for Cameroon, Alcam. These elections saw political competitions and uh, André Marie Bida emerged as one of the top political leaders and for that reason he became the Prime Minister of French Cameroon in 1957. Equally, the fact that André Marie Bida or the visa to grant concessions to the UPC, creation of political parties. For example, the UPC was against the colonial administration. Midas refusal to grant concessions. The UPC made the colonial administration know that he was working hand in glove with the French colonial administration. The creation of political parties like the UPC we already saw, Midas participation in the 1960s elections which we already saw, the proclamation, proclamation of the election results and Midas with his Democrat Cameroonian political parties which won 20 seats 
resorted to the swearing in of Andre Marie Bida as Premier or Prime Minister of French Cameroon on the 15th of May 1957. These were the circumstances, some of the circumstances that surrounded the rise of Andre Marie Bida to the post of Premier in British or in French Cameroon. With this background from our homework, we are going to delve into our lesson proper for today, which focuses on Andre Marie Bida, the administration of Andre Marie Bida from 1957 to 1958. The administration of Andre Marie from 1957 to 1958. Our presentation of today is going to follow or we don't following this, the, this plan. The learning objectives, previous knowledge, situation in real life, learning activities, application exercises, and we shall conclude with another homework in preparation for the next lesson. By the time we are through with this lesson of today, you will be able to account for Andre Marie Bida's rise to power. You will equally be able to critically examine the administration of Andre Marie Bida as well as analyze the reasons that led to the demise of Andre Marie Bida as Prime Minister in French Cameroon. In other words, you will be able to present the reasons for the rise of Andre Marie Bida to power, critically examine the Bida administration, what were the challenges that confronted the Bida administration, how did they manage those challenges. You will also be able to analyze the reasons for the demise of Andre Marie Bida or reason for the fall of Andre Marie Bida from power. Why was he dropped by the French colonial administration in 1958? To continue with our lesson, you already have knowledge, as previous knowledge, you are already aware or you already studied the Brazzaville Conference as well as the UPC revolt that started in Cameroon in 1955, in French Cameroon in 1955. These are some of those aspects that agenda the rights of Andre Marie Bida and which also challenged his, his administration in French Cameroon. Let us consider this situation in real life. In his electoral campaign, Mayor X, it could be mayor of any uh, decentralized electoral um, unit, drilled or trilled the villagers with loud sounding words and promises like the construction of roads, schools, hospitals. That is, during his electoral campaign, Mayor X drilled the villagers. He also intrigued them with loud sounding words and promises like the construction of roads, schools, and even hospitals. How can you contribute to nation building by enabling community leaders to lead by fulfilling their campaign promises. How can you, as a promising young leader, contribute to nation building by enabling community leaders to lead by fulfilling campaign promises? To proceed with our lesson, let us begin by observing this document after which we are going to answer some questions. Let us answer the following questions. Identify the state's personality on the document 
and the possible dates and events on which he was presenting his speech. What were the reasons for his rise to power? What challenges confronted his government? The personality on the document, the state personality, is Andre Marie Mbida. And the event on the document, they said, identify the state personality on the document and the possible date and event on which he was presenting a speech. That was on the 15th of May, 1957. And that was during the swearing-in ceremony of André Marie Bida as Prime Minister of French Cameroon. What circumstances, what reasons brought about the rise of André Marie Bida to the position of Prime Minister in French Cameroon? That's the third part of our exercise. What were the reasons for his rise to power? To begin with, the sound intellectual background of André Marie Bida charmed the French colonial administration. He was an assimilated citizen of French Cameroon. And with his sound intellectual background, he was well grounded with the French culture and way of life. This enticed the French colonial administration to nominate him for the position of prime minister. Equally, the Christian background of André Marie Bida made him to be the choice of the French colonial administration. After all, his son had as godfather the minister of colonies, the French minister of colonies. So in fact, the son of André Marie Bida had as godfather the French minister of colonies. That notwithstanding, the major competitor, political competitor, political rival of André Marie Bida was Amadou Aijo. Unfortunately or fortunately, André, uh, Amadou Aijo was a Muslim from the northern part of Cameroon. And by this time, if we can recall well our previous lessons on decolonization, we had seen the Algerian War of Independence. That war was within a Muslim community. And so the French colonial ambition had some reticence on the personality of an, uh, Amadou Aijo, who was a Muslim. And therefore, they preferred a Christian like Andre Marie Bida. Equally, like we already said, Andre Marie Bida was a Christian. And so his connection with the French Minister of Colonies, who was the godfather of his son, made him a right candidate for the position of Prime Minister. Furthermore, Andre Marie Bida's experience in colonial administration. He was a secretary in the French colonial administration. In that respect, he had some knowledge on colonial administration, and so to the French colonial administrators, he was a better candidate. That notwithstanding, during the 1956 elections into the Legislative Assembly for Cameroon, although the name was actually changed in 1957, but the Legislative Assembly for Cameroon elections were engaged in 1956. And with this, André Marie Mila, with his Democrat Cameroonian Political Party, won 20 seats. The UC of Amadou Aijo won 30 seats. The Peza Independent of Matthias Jumesi won 9 seats. The Action National Political Party won eight seats. And so, because the main rival of André Marie Bida was Amadou Aido with 30 seats, the French colonial administration preferred André Marie Bida to become the Prime Minister with, with his 20, which was not the majority. We are going to see why as we proceed. Equally, the absence of the UPC in the 1956 elections made it possible for André Marie Bida to become very popular because the UPC was the 
first indigenous political party in the French Cameroon and was very popular. But because of the UPC crisis, they were barred from taking part in the 1956 elections. And so the other political parties cleared all the seats. Like we said, Andre Marie Bida had 20 seats but became the prime minister. This was the result of the nomination procedures in French Cameroon. It was possible for the High Commissioner to nominate the governor, not necessarily depending on to nominate a prime minister, not necessarily depending on election results. And that is why Andre Marimbida took precedence on Amado Aijo, who had 30 seats. With these Andre Marimida became the first Prime Minister of French Cameroon. His government was born with a lot of, came to be with a lot of instability in French Cameroon. And this was the UPC political crisis that started in 1955. Andre Marimida was appointed. In May, on May 12, 1957, and he was inaugurated on the 15th of May, 1957, as we can see or as we saw in the document. He formed a coalition government which comprised of the Action Nationale, the UC of Amado Aijo, and Paysan Independent. These were the various political parties that had taken part in the 1956 elections. So they formed a coalition government with Andre Marie Bida as Prime Minister and Amadou Aido as Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Interior. The administration of Andre Marie Bida had a statute which was endowed, which endowed French Cameroon with a constitution, but then the French High Commissioner was in charge of defense, external relations, and the power to appoint a Prime Minister. So despite the statute which uh, French Cameroon had, the French High Commissioner still reserved a lot of political power and decision-making, which, uh, which was in charge of defense, external relations, as well as the power to appoint the Prime Minister. When the Bida government was, or was created, French Cameroon had two major challenges. The first of these challenges was the UPC crisis, the challenge of the UPC. This was the first indigenous political party in French Cameroon, which called for immediate independence and reunification. But then, this was against the wishes of the French colonial administration, and this pushed the UPC political party to declare independence for French Cameroon, which was not respected, and they engaged into uh, uh, rebellious activities. These nationalists decided to use the hard means to achieve independence, and thus strain their relationship with the French colonial administration and some French colonial administrators related politicians like the André Marie leaders. And so, to handle this, André Marie Mida paid a visit to Bumiobel in July 1957, the hometown of Bumiobel, one of the emblematic and charismatic leaders of the UPC political party, where he threatened the members of the UPC. He refused to grant them unconditional amnesty, and he instead appealed to the colonial administration for plein pouvoir, for the military to be able to crush the UPC nationalists who were fighting for the independence of Cameroon, French Cameroon. Equally, the Bida administration was challenged by the issue of independence and reunification, which was involved at the time. The UPC political party was very popular and was the first indigenous political party and called for immediate independence and reunification of French Cameroon. However, this was anathema to the French colonial administration. And so the Anbida administration inherited this political challenge. Andre Marimida wanted French Cameroon to, be made, to maintain its status as a trust territory. To him, reunification was far fetched. 
and he referred to the UPC nationalists as terrorists and refused to grant them independence. This provoked, this instigated the UPC nationalists who intensified the revolts. And with this, it became complicated. The ambition of Andre Marie Bida became so complicated. And that is why we ask ourselves, why did Andre Marie Bida fall from power? What is one of the reasons that caused Andre Marie Bida to fall from power? To begin with, Andre Marie Bida wanted French Cameroon to maintain the status of a trust territory. French Cameroon had moved from a mandated territory of the League of Nations to become a trust territory of the United Nations Organization with a change in status. This change implied that French Cameroon had to gradually be prepared for eventual independence. However, Andre Marie Bida preferred French Cameroon to remain a trust territory. But then, the political interest of the people at the time, especially the political party, was for immediate independence and reunification. And thus, this made Andre Marie Bida very unpopular amongst the political elite in French Cameroon and even among the French Cameroonian students on scholarship in France. There was controversy with, and there might be a lot of controversies with the colonial administration. He was against the imposition of French personnel in Cameroon. Andre Marie Bida equally wanted autonomy for the Territorial Ministerial Council. He never wanted to be imposed upon by the French colonial administration. And all of this put André Marie Bida at a loggerhead with the French colonial administration. And that began signaling his downfall. Remember, he was nominated by the French colonial administration. He never was the political leader with the majority of the votes. And equally, he never had an absolute majority because he had just 30 votes out of 70. Andre Marie Bida was equally against the poor treatment of French Cameroonians who suffered from the COVID, indigenous, forced labor, long working hours, very low wages. Because Andre Marie Bida kicked against these harsh conditions of French Cameroonians. He wanted improved social conditions of French Cameroonians. He fell out with his French colonial masters. Furthermore, Bida's opposition to a political solution to the UPC crisis drifted him away from the French, created a rift between him and the French colonial administration. Why? The French had experienced the Algerian War of Independence and realized that a peaceful and political solution to the UPC crisis would have been better. But André Marie Bida was adamant and preferred a brutal, a military option. Furthermore, the unpopularity of the Bida government was another factor that contributed to the rise of the fall of Andre Marie Bida from power. Remember, during the 1956 elections, Andre Marie Bida won only 20 seats out of 70. He won only 20 seats out of 70. It means he was not very popular within the national territory and amongst the political elite at the time. Equally, in the Bassa and Bapliki land, which were UPC strongholds, Andre Marie Bida was very unpopular. Therefore, his legitimacy as prime minister was not recognized in several parts of French Cameroon. He was merely a colonial stooge put in place to prevent or to block the, the struggle for independence for the indigenous people of French Cameroon. Andre Marie Bida was also not popular amongst the French Cameroonian students who were on scholarship in France. Because of his intransigence, his inflexibility, he was greatly criticized by these French Cameroonian students in France. To a point where he even terminated some of their scholarships and forced them to return to the country because they were not in favor of his policies. This made Andre Marie Bida very unpopular. 
signaling his demise. More so, Andre Marine Bidas' anti revocation policies motivated his downfall. According to Andre Marie Bida, immediate independence or French Cameroon was not right for independence. And reunification was a far fetched dream. At a time when the most polit popular indigenous political party was craving for immediate independence and reunification, and were actually at the neck of the French colonial administration, and also at a time when the wind of change was blowing across the world for decolonization in French uh, or in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in North Africa. We had the Indo Chinese War. We saw the city of the French at Zem Fu. The French had already realized that independence was a popular option in the colonies. But to Andre Marimida, French Cameroon was not right for it, was not ready for independence, and education was a far fetched dream. That notwithstanding, Andre Marie Pia's Abombang declaration in January 1958 was a major blow to his administration. He threatened to democratize the northern parts of Cameroon. And imagine the strong Fulbe rulers who were very powerful. Imagine that they were going to lose their powers to Andre Marie Pia. After, after, however, Lose their powers to Andre Marimida, whereas their son, Amadou Aido, had lost his position, which democratically should have had to Andre Marimida. That didn't sink well. And they threatened to break away to join Obangi Shari and Chad. That was on head of to the French colonial administration. Andre Marimida also threatened to balkanize French Cameroon. He also threatened to carry out transfer of state personnel from the south to the north. What the final straw that broke the camel's back was the resignation of the Union Cameroonese members, cabinet members of the Andre Marie Bidas government. With this, Andre Marie Bida could not stand it anymore. And so it resulted to his resignation in on February 18, 1958, because his attempts to renew his cabinet with all Democrat Cameroonian members was rejected by the colonial administration. So on February 19, 1958, Amado Aydro was invested as the new Prime Minister of French Cameroon. Let us consider this application exercise. Do you think that the few hundred UPCs who have taken the initiative to launch these attacks were mandated by all Cameroonians. Reaffirm once more that I reaffirm once more that the Cameroonian government will not allow the disorder to spread in our young nation. From Julius Victor Moore. We are asked to identify the statesman speaking and what could have been made his speech different. It was Andre Marie Mida, the first Prime Minister of French Cameroon, and it would have been different if he appealed to the UPC nationalists or even promised them amnesty. Let us consider this other document, which was a declaration of Amadou Aïdou, distancing himself from immediate independence. Distancing himself from immediate independence. Let us consider these questions. Identify the speaker. Why should this leader distance himself from the idea of immediate independence? Who was principally disavowed with the policy of Mbida? And how did the French compensate this speaker? It was Amadou Aïdjo, the second prime minister or the successor of Andre Marie Mbida. He was against or immediate independence was against the interests of the colonial administration and he did not want to free, displease the French colonial administration. It was the French colonial administration who were disavowed by the principle of immediate independence. With this regard, 
the new French High Commissioner Jean Ramadier installed Amadou Aïdjo as new Prime Minister of French Cameroon on February 19, 1958. With this, we have come to the end of this lesson. As homework, you will trace the biography of Amadou Aïdjo. You will trace the biography of Amadou Aïdjo. Several sources, amongst which we have History of Cameroon since 1800, Web Sources, Advanced Level History Pathfinder, and Cameroon since 1800, an Advanced Level Approach, second edition, were consulted for this lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to have the rise of Amadou Aïdjo. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa tina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen.